Alright, so welcome back everyone to the second episode of Vino Prada series. Um, working title by the way is yeah, it's still a working title. So if you've been to the first episode, la, is we are mainly with this is the podcast called a uh, three-part video collaboration between myself and Yen, the creator of Blog. Blog. My name is Siobhan, I'm the founder and creator of, of the YouTube channel Simply Me Studio. And honestly, if you're watching this video, you are actually at my channel. <laughs> yeah, so this is the second episode of the video product series. Mm. So let's get into it. Question one When actually is the right time to strike out as a freelancer or even to start your own media business? Okay, the truth is that there is no right time. My son and Yen, we started freelancing even when we were still students or uh, teenagers. I started freelancing even way before I was in the sale. Mm. But back then, I was a freelancing a bit more in the video editing. It's only after I was in the sale when I started free, uh, branching out a bit more, I freelance a bit more as a videographer, even though honestly, I am not really a big fan of actually filming. Uh. So these days, everyone with even a photo, mm. with even a phone, uh, they are calling themselves videographers already. Uh. Yeah, that's, that's quite true. These days the phones are getting better and better and yeah, more, almost and on par with DSLR. Yeah, and so. honestly yeah. speaking, as long as you've mm. got external lenses, yes, literally anyone can be, you can really, you mm. know, do this, you can post it on YouTube. But obviously, if you, those videos are actually going on the big screens like, you know, cinemas or even, you know, like the billboards that you see at mm. Orchard Road, that one you definitely cannot use phone because phone actually will compress your videos but with actual video cameras or even DSLR like the, like the Sony cameras mm. or even the Sigma lenses those actually can shoot really high quality ones like in 4K or even 5K mm. yeah but so like I said there is no right time to strike out as a freelancer it's honestly how you feel are you ready for it? Are you, are you ready to be able to you know, deal with clients? Because I can tell you when, from past experience, especially when you're dealing with them, dealing it with as a freelancer or even as a, let's say you are, you are representing a company, okay? Mm. Not everyone is going to be happy with you. A lot of people will, you know, miss out every single bit of thing that they can out of you. This is from personal experience. Like let's say the, a break upon video duration, let's say it's five minutes. They will want, ah yeah, let's extend the ten minutes, but they don't pay you extra. Mm. So what are you gonna do then? Are you? Yeah. So you will, you will starting out. Maybe you find that you are you're not really that good yet. So when people say, hey, how about extending more minutes, but then they don't want to pay you more, and then yeah. you are like, maybe I'm not good enough. Okay, maybe I'll just try to. Okay, as more. newbies, maybe let's say I got no experience. Mm. I don't have portfolio even. But this is my this is my golden rule to you. Uh. Even if let's say you totally is new to video, you never shoot a video before, you never edited some edited a video before, you never even you know uh, done this kind of jobs before. My no matter what uh, even if, let's say you're just charging fifty dollars or one hundred dollars or so never mind. Please charge them. Never do things for free. Uh. You know this golden rule called uh, that is no free lunch in the world. This applies to you so. Because what you're giving them is not just a skills. You are sacrificing your time. Uh, you are also giving them your expertise, your skill set. They are hiring someone, aka you, is because they don't know how to do it themselves. They are hiring you, a professional. You are giving them your, them your expertise, your time, your skills. So don't undervalue yourself. And also another thing, especially for freelancers, draft out a contract, black and white. Don't just take it verbally. I made the same mistake the first time round when I first started as a freelancer. I've actually forgot to include the contract uh, that there is only the limited amount of changes. Mm. Because I forget to include the contract, they take the chance to ask me for change after change after change after change after change. I lost count a number of times. <laughs> so yeah. Number one, contract. Very important. Drive out contract, black and white. And if you can afford it or if you maybe have to contact a lawyer or something, get them to look through the contract for you. Make sure it's ironclad mm-hmm. because some people, especially I won't say I won't say business owners but there are some bad eggs in the world la. They really will take advantage of young and young enterprising entrepreneurs. Huh? So then they'll take a chance to you know take you to small claims court, take you to high court, take you to this court, oh, take you to that court. So, so many legal procedures. Yeah, yeah. a lot of loopholes uh, especially let's say if you are for example, let's say they engage you to shoot for them, let's say maybe a documentary, because this actually happened to a friend of mine. Mm, oh. Yeah. No, not going to go into more details about it. Uh. But 
Suffice to say, even for media, yeah, you know that it's always a chance depending on the kind of video and actually what happened. They can take you to court. So, number, number one, no verbal agreement. Everything has to be in black and white. Contract. Give to them, make sure they sign. They never sign, don't do the project. Uh. Mm. It will bite you in the ass. Question two. Were there actually any moments where layman clients or employers who think of you as a video machine that can do anything that they imagine? You want that reason? Okay, so I remember there's one time, uh, okay, I, I, can't, I can't name names that I, I work with also. Uh, but anyway, uh, so just one time I was shooting a video and then I, was, I had this request. Oh, you know, I, I saw on, on the, the, the those movie cinema, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, this, this particular car can, uh, they can make it look like a very cinematic, uh, high-end car commercial kind of feel. So you, you can definitely do the same thing also with your camera. So I, I, I looked at the, the person that I'm working with and then I'm like, no, you will need like a whole film crew with nice lights and then with uh, people who can, who can edit like visual effects for this whole thing to do like a cinematic uh, commercial. But then, then, then I was given the reply, oh, but I saw someone on YouTube, they, they can make the, replicate the same results using like a miniature model. Yeah, well, of course for me, I couldn't really fight back this argument because I know that if you come up with a miniature model and you use some lights, definitely you can achieve the effect. But, but I, I, I just felt that because since the products I'm dealing with, if, with is that at that point in time, it was like musical instruments. Of course, yeah, honestly, so honestly, this yeah. is my answer no. to... This is my answer to anyone mm. that asks, okay? There is a very big difference between a $50 project and a $5,000 mm. project. Yeah. Is my answer to almost everyone. Uh, you pay peanuts, uh, you expect to get monkeys. Uh. Literally, that's a very big difference, like I said. Uh, $50 to $5,000. Mm. So, this is uh, also like a behind the scenes uh, video that I saw before of they are shooting uh, actually a war, uh, um, a war film. Uh. There was this actually opening scene of about five prisoners of war, they are walking through the trenches. Actually, that one, that one is a uh, is green screen. Mm. They use a small camera or is it a, a phone camera? Uh, they build a set. They actually go through it. Then the five actors mm. was actually just walking mm -hmm. through something that is supposed to look like a trench, but green screen. Uh, obviously, that is a visual film, so I'm sure they got the budget to blow la. But actually, a lot of what you see, yeah, it is possible. But again, budget la. Sky like versus like like when the but like when the producer asked me to change the sky yeah uh, rotoscoping yeah uh, mm. that one not impossible but I told him uh, you pay me hundred thousand dollars yeah and and I already been very kind to him ah uh, because normally I charge five thousand for that uh. <laughs> what was it like to work in the production house compared to being an in house videographer for a company okay this is more me because I'm not sure if you work in production houses before uh, not not so much uh, although I I tried once for maybe three days and then one for. Okay, mm, internship. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is more me now. Like I mentioned in the first episode, I was actually recruited straight out of the cell. Uh, I was headhunted by a production house. La. I'm not going to mention any names here. I don't want to get sued. Thank you very much. But suffice to say, that company that I worked for, the very first one, is actually still around today. But I don't think there are media departments around anymore. Mm, okay. Okay. I haven't seen a video for them for ages. Okay, long story short, they actually recruited me out. La. That time, the media department is very, is very new. Including myself, there were at least two others. One editor and the other one is the head editor. Though honestly speaking, I never actually saw the head editor do anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling the truth. Okay, so, no, so my official title is actually editor. But the truth is that uh, I'm also the videographer. I'm also the sound mixer. I'm also the sound designer. I mean, that's the thing with Singapore production houses. The smaller the company is, you tend to wear a lot more hats. Mm. You are not just a video editor, you are the videographer, you're the script writer, you're the sound designer, you're the sound mixer, you're the sound editor. Yeah, so you're, you're doing everything that you're related to. Yes, especially for small companies. But the truth is that the smaller companies tend to have a bit more or less office politics. I'm not sure whether it's just the media industry in Singapore or not, but I tend to find that a lot of larger companies, I did one internship at one such company, it's one of the larger ones in Singapore, it's a private one. I am not going to go into much detail about it, but, but what actually happened. But surface to say that I couldn't wait to get the hell out of there. That is how bad it is. Office politics. Mm. Which is nothing I hated. Which is normally the reason why I tend to go in medium to small time companies. Yeah. And for production houses is yeah la, you really have to be really very on the go. You mm. have to be prepared to get like five o'clock in the morning. You got prepared to work until twelve midnight and that is if you're lucky because by one of my previous jobs I actually ever spent three nights overnight at the office before and my you are no overtime thing. 
That is what Singapore is like, lah. Media culture, at least. Yeah, so all sorts of erratic filming, like uh, all the way to three hours of the night. Yeah. yeah, and they can they will happily happily call you at twelve o'clock midnight. Ah, uh, ask you to come down to the office to, to finish up or edit. Uh. This, will happen, really? this is what happened to me once. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I I tried before this media production company. They they were doing uh they were doing an entire bunch of reshoot for a computer company. So they I think they went overseas Malaysia to film all the executive di directors. They're introducing their latest brand of product because they're not happy, very happy with the first production house that they engaged. So we had to do a three three day edit that I think every day we just editing from morning all the way to two three a.m. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I mean when we are younger, you can uh, now uh, cannot edit <laughs> Old old already. Yeah, old already. Mm. Uh, I'm still young. I'm thirty or three only. <laughs> Have you received any strange requests that actually made working together pretty much tension fueled? Okay, so the, the more tension field one is like I mentioned earlier. I think back then when I was doing video, then they wanted me to uh, do a video most every day. I think because back then, because since I was working in house for uh, let's say a, a middle school, mm -hmm. so 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 I guess maybe the, with the kind of pay that they'll give me, they're starting to feel like why why am I paying paying this guy so much for then just three videos every, every month? So so it, it will let's say if they are pay, paying me three k a month, you. To them, you feel like each video, whether it's one minute or two minutes or three minutes, you feel like you feel like, huh? For one minute of video, I bring this guy one k per per video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I tend to get a lot of these problems as well. And unlike how easy we make it look, uh, the truth is that producing a video is not easy. Mm. Uh, it's impossible for anyone, no matter how much of a miracle or fast worker they are, to give you a halfway decent video in just one day. Mm. It minimally already take at least three days to produce even a good video, uh. and that is for and that is for ads, uh. 30, 15 no. second, 30 second ads, uh. take three days already. Uh. Oh, so that, that, that's a pretty long process, right? Because people need, have to look through it and yeah. give you their feedback. And, and mind you, you it took me three yeah. days because I'm also the one that's coming out the storyboard. The mm, oh yeah, right, right. Yeah, and I still want to chase down the people to get them to, mm. to get them to sit still don't enough to do the filming. That is why when we told them and we told people, no, it's impossible to give you in one day, and yeah, that is the, that is our reasoning behind. And when they tell you ah, to even it can or cannot make make it happen up, ah, turn it on them ah. Tell them say you you think you're so good, you do it yourself. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, that's that, that, that's that's quite quite a big reply. Yeah, because sometimes uh, yeah. yeah, sometimes they just want me to to film. Uh, okay, there's people who tell me, okay, I just keep it simple, just just film it like that will do. Then in my mind, it's like, why, why didn't you do it yourself? Yeah, uh, actually, honestly, by the time I was in my late 20s, let's say 28, 29, I was on my second or third job at the time, maybe. The boss at the time actually told me that. Okay, to be fair, the boss mm. also know me the background one. Mm. I'm not going to tell you what, I think you know which company I'm talking about. Okay. It's the one that got slammed by, 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 mm. the, by the ministry. Okay, okay. okay, so that is what the boss at the time they told me also. At the time, I was the only video editor. So you can imagine, I was really very exhausted already. I was stressed out already. I really in no mood to care already. I snapped back at him. If you think you're so good at it, you can come up with a video. And mind you, the videos that I do for him that time uh, is semi-documentary. It's mm -hmm. at least five minutes long. Uh. Mm -hmm. The fact I can even come up in one video in two days is very, very good idea. Uh. Mm -hmm. He expect me to come up with five videos in one video. Oh, one. I snapped I snap back at him. So he said, if you think you can do it, I invite you to find anyone to do it to, to your standard or best, you do it yourself. That's the problem with those that no media background mm -hmm. one. Uh. They tend to think our job is very easy. Mm. They think that it's very easy to do, can come out in half an hour. One thing I learned is to manage others' expectations. I remember my most memorable time was when I was working in a hospital, in their corporate communications mm -hmm. department. Yeah, so the director was very nice. He just let me uh, run the show myself. He would just receive jobs from other departments who what need is a video. And then he'd be like, okay, you know, uh, just let, let them know if you've got the capacity to take up the job, then just let say yes. If no time to find uh, other production house on their own, manage their expectation. That's why he told me. So that's one thing that I learned from him. So I'll just tell, tell this department, okay, give me about um, what, one week or two weeks. I will exaggerate a bit. I'll make it look like I, I, can't, I can't really come out with a video that fast. So I'll say two weeks. 
But actually, I can come up with it about one week and, and, and a bit more. Yeah, so at least they'll be surprised that hey, yeah. this guy is quite Honestly, fast. Honestly, yeah. like I said, la, if your boss is mm. the really mm. unreasonable type, don't want to give you time grace, uh, maybe it is a full time job. Maybe it's time you start considering mm. uh, whether, you, whether you should change job. Mm-hmm. Because if they are going to be like this, uh, I can tell you they're going to make your life hell. Yeah, so of course, with anything that, that is you know, we're being paid for, people have expectations. Yeah, but, but I think the one thing we can do is yes. also manage the expectations yeah. but if they don't and listen then yeah and it's not just managing expectations mm. uh, because let's yeah. say comes the filming uh, mm. number one rule uh, don't care about the video protect yourself no. if they ask you to break the law like let's say fly a drone in a place that you know that cannot, mm. cannot fly one uh, don't do it uh. no. not even at the expense of a job for it costs uh, jail fine, fine is just the least of your worries uh. Worst case scenario is you get jail, mm. especially the drone uh, is in a military zone. Yeah. For Singapore, unlike most countries, mm. we tend to be very strict about no mm. fly zones. Especially since we got quite a lot of problems mm. about drones a while ago. Some people, they really can do some crazy mm. things to get the perfect shot. Mm. Uh. Don't risk yourself. I'm serious. Don't, let's say, you go to the top of, let's say, a uh, uh, 30 level building, for example, uh, and you want to film what hanging upside down, please don't do it. Uh. You are not Superman, uh, you cannot fly. Uh. Mm. Yeah, so so don't, don't, don't do it, just you know, also protect your own equipment from damaging. Yeah, yeah. actually, these days there are insurance for equipment, uh, so you can insure your, your cameras, uh, especially if they are really the high end types like Black Magic cameras. Mm. And when I say Black Magic cameras, uh, I meant the modern, I meant that is the that is the brand name, uh, I don't mean literal Black Magic, okay? Yeah, so there are actually insurance for cameras these days. Uh. You can check your insurance station if you really want to, you know, insure your camera, especially if you are, if you are going like destination, des- destination shoots or that. Uh, mm-hmm. Especially because you never know on plane sometimes uh, uh, there's at least a uh, uh, four out of ten chance that your your luggage can go missing. Uh. <laughs> That's also mainly the reason why my camera is always in my carry on bag. Yeah, and also you turn your camera to smash around while it's like luggage, you know. Everybody string the luggage in and then all the luggage is going on the those rollers. Yeah, yeah so I learned my lesson after my first uh, overseas uh, shoot. La. I always took my camera and I carry on back with really me after that. Mm. I don't put it in my luggage anymore. <laughs> you feel at times that you can never actually explain your way out of any technical failure of a video event. Okay, so yeah, this is very awkward because sometimes, you know, there's, as someone who does video, you know that there's a lot of things that can go, go wrong. Like yeah, the, can be mic, the mics fail, yeah, the system fail, the camera fail. die, I also, it happened to me a few times uh, so, so sometimes when your, the, the person you're working with, the company you're working in or, or your client you will be like, hey, how, how's the, the video? And then you're like, you, you know, if you say stuff like, you know, my, what, my FD card got corrupted, my, my, my mic cable came loose, my camera shut down. They will think that, that it's yeah. not hard rescue. Yeah. It's, it's not nice to hear. La. Actually, the same thing happened to me once in an event. Mm. Uh, mind you, this one was actually a mm. complimentary because I was actually mm. a member of this uh, group la, that they they having those kind of uh, you know networking events la, for business owners. It was back then when I was, uh, when I was actively freelancing. So I offered to, since I was coming to the event anyway, I offered to cover the event highlights for them and do those interviews for them. Totally complimentary lah. I would say for your church mm. lah. Complimentary, mm-hmm. okay? Complimentary. Unfortunately for me lah, they wanted me to use their equipment for some goddamn reason. Okay, I'm not going to ask any questions why lah, okay? Uh, okay, the audio, okay, the audio equipment they have, I cannot remember what brand it was it, but surface to say that it's not a very good brand. Mm. On the day of the shoot itself, the audio equipment died on me. Oh no. Unfortunately, the president of the group, they wanted by hook or by crook uh, to, you know, to record interviews still. So, and because I got no e- audio equipment, uh, so I went the next best thing. Uh, I stuck the mic uh, into the internal mic part of my camera and just record like that. Mm. I already knew already what the sound quality is going to be like already. Uh. But uh, they want it, okay? And no matter how much I clean the sound after that in post production, uh, it literally sounds like the guy is speaking underwater. Oh, that's and, bad. Yeah. And I'm already giving a very uh, kind description already. Uh. Mm. Give the video highlights to them. Three days later, they contact me. And they say, so we received a video. I say, oh, so I say, oh, so how is it? How do you like the video? 
I said, oh, the beer ice is great. It's very nice. We all love it. It's just, I said, just, uh, not mind you, uh, at this point, I didn't know where this, where this is going with here. Uh. Why the sound is so bad, huh? <laughs> this, is, this is my point, okay? Sound is make up 85% of the video. You get good sound, no one will hear it one. No one will notice it. But once you get bad sound, it's like every, every Tom, Dick and Harry uh, is noticing it. Mm. Yeah, so, so it's a very... Something that's easily no noticeable. Right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this is especially those of you that are freelancing. Uh, always bring backup audio equipment, backup cameras with you. Uh. You never know when things are going uh, Especially if you are doing weddings. This one, that one uh, is no is no second take one. Uh. Yeah, that, that's a once in a life, lifetime. Uh. Uh, so, yeah, the, and, yeah, and you don't even say you professionally wise that uh, you will hit you. Uh. The bride and groom will not thank you for it. Mm. And I tell you, reputation is easy to build up, but, but very it's difficult to build up, but very easy to destroy. Nah. One hit and that is it. Uh, your reputation will be gone. So if you don't want to get a bad reputation, uh, please tolong, tolong, tolong. Uh, prepare for everything like this. Uh, bring back up equipment, whatever equipment, and yeah, all this stuff, all this kind mm. of thing. Because we'll be free ourselves. But luckily for us, uh, it's normal even not wedding. Yeah. Question number six. Why don't books ever get turned directly into movies? In other words, why are the movies that are based off a book different from the book they are based on? I get this question a lot of times. I actually answered this question before on Quora before. Someone was asking me. So my answer to it will be the same as what I told this person. That is a very good reason. When you are reading a book, uh, you are actually reading from the thoughts, the mindset of this character. Mm. But a movie is different. You actually have to be shown it visually. That let's say, for example, the Harry Potter movie. Mm. Okay, you will notice there's a lot of extra different scenes that got added in. A lot of extra conversations that added in. That is the reason because with Harry Potter books, for example, you are reading it from the perspective of Harry. You are going to his thoughts. You are going to his character itself. But if a movie is difficult, the producer and the director actually have to show you visually what is happening, what is Harry thinking, what is the reactions. And that is why majority of the time, uh, books to movies, uh, majority of the time are always books. Uh. I mm. can only name a few examples that is not. And that is also the reason why there is no so many scenes from a book that's cut out that is not no, that never make it in the movie. Because number one, it, it, take, it will take some precious time. Mm. Because a movie minimally, maximum two and a half hours only. It cannot be longer. Yeah. That's the reason why you actually have to show it visually. You, it's not internal. That's also the reason why lah. most of the time books and movies are books. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we come to the end of episode 2. I hope that this is informative and you've liked it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is the end of episode 2 of the Vino Printer series and we definitely need to find a better name for this. Yeah, so, so we'll put the working title once we found it. Yeah, and apart from the Video Printer series, we, myself and Vian, we are also coming up with another new video, with another new series, uh, which is what we christened it so far as my Iron Rice Bowl series. Which I think from the name you might know what it's about. So yeah, stay tuned, see you in the next episode.